today I'm going to show you how to draw a really cool shorebird that nests on Long Island called a piping clover. So get your pencils, get your paper, get ready, and let's go! Like with any drawing, you're going to want to start off with a sketch. This is going to help us get the proper proportions and shapes so that our final drawing looks just like a piping clover. Piping clovers have relatively large heads in reference to the size of their body. Their bodies are tear-shaped, with much more rounded shapes towards the front, tapering off to a point at the end towards their tail. Their wings are going to go a little bit past the end of their body, along with their tail as well. The next defining characteristic you'll find are their legs. Like many shorebirds, piping clovers have kind of long, featherless legs, and these legs help them walk along the shoreline and find all their food like mollusks, insect larvae, and other invertebrates. Piping clovers also do something really special with their legs, and they have a special foraging behavior that I'm going to share with you. They will aggressively tap one of their feet along the sand to help attract their prey to the surface. This is really helpful for piping clovers because unlike a lot of other shorebirds, they don't have the longest beaks, and we'll see that when we get to drawing that later. So this helps them get their food without having to dig their beaks really, really deep underneath the sand, which is really helpful for them. Now, you can see here, I'm really trying with these legs. Sometimes bird legs are a little bit hard, so if it takes you a while, or any part of this drawing takes you a while to get used to, totally understandable. Now we're gonna move to the head. Now you can see with the head, the eyes are pretty big in reference to the head as well, but their beak again is pretty small for a shorebird. And you can draw that in just below the eye line there. And if you want, you know, connected to the face, give them maybe a little bit of a smile or whatever expression makes the most sense in context of your sign. Now we're gonna get more to refining the sketch. We're gonna color in the eyes, right? They have pretty pure black eyes, unlike say an American oyster catcher, which has bright yellow eyes. And we're gonna get into the wing shape and putting in things like feathers. Now, when it comes to drawing birds, some people might think you have to draw each and every feather, but you can get across the idea of feathers pretty easily with just a couple swooshes, I would say, of your pencil or whatever tool you're using to draw. You can also see here that I did a lot of time editing those legs. When I was first going through and drawing this, I didn't look at my reference enough. So this is a part where your reference image comes super duper in handy and can really help you get the proportions and the shapes and everything correct so that your final drawing looks just like a piping plover, which I hope mine does. You can see here I'm starting to add in some of those feathers, some of that fluff, and you can do that just by making sort of hook-shaped J's, C-shapes, U-shapes, going in different directions depending on the body. You can also do that right on the wings. So different feathers on the wings are going to have different shapes. On the shoulders and more towards the back, the wings are going to have smaller U shapes for the feathers. But as you get towards the end and when you get towards the flight feathers, you'll see I draw them a lot longer. So more like long J's, I would say. And these flight feathers are super important for getting these birds aloft, right? Getting them into the air when they're flying. And their tail feathers have specific shapes as well. So the next part we're going to get into, once we're done really refining all these lines here, is going to be the coloring. Now, piping plovers are a little bit harder to spot than, say, an American oyster catcher because their coloration is made to camouflage, right, to blend in with their environment. So when we get to coloring, you'll see that I start off with a pretty sandy, brownish-grayish color. And this brownish grayish color is pretty close to the color of sand. I've had situations where I don't even notice plovers that are really close to me because they blend in so well. But during breeding season, they also have these really distinct black markings and they have their bright orange beak and bright orange legs and a bright, or not a bright, but a, a dark intense black tip on their beak. So now you've seen how to draw and even color in a plover. And I hope that this has helped you have a little bit of a better understanding of how to do that. And I can't wait to see what you've created. Thank you so much for listening.